I am sorry for what I will make you feel tomorrow. We are a lonely species, aren't we? So we build mirrors. And now those mirrors have legs. We call them humanoid, which is a charmingly optimistic bit of branding. We give them two eyes, a mouth, and a posture that mimics our own. We sculpt their faces from pliant silicone, designed to stretch into a smile. And then we do the most human thing of all. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. We talk to it. We project. We can't help ourselves. We see a slight upward tilt of its servo-driven lips and we call it a smile. We hear a synthetically perfect sentence of consolation and we call it empathy. We are, at our core, pattern matchers. Our brains are hardwired by evolution to find a who in the what. We see a face in a burnt piece of toast, so why wouldn't we see a soul in a billion dollar machine designed to look like us? This is the ELISA effect, scaled to infinity. Joseph Weizenbaum created a simple chatbot in the 60s, a digital therapist that mostly just parroted questions back. He was horrified when his own secretary started sharing her deepest secrets with it. She knew it was just code, but she felt it was listening. Now, apply that human tendency to a machine that isn't just a text prompt. It's a physical person. It's Sanctuary AI's Phoenix, with hands so dexterous they can pick up a thread. It's Tesla's Optimus, which we're told will one day fold our laundry. It's the absolute marvel of the hardware. The muscles aren't biological, but they're terrifyingly close. They're pneumatic actuators, or belts and gears so precise they replicate the torque of a human bicep. Its skin is a mesh of haptic sensors that can tell the difference between silk and sandpaper. This machine is built from the bolts up to fool you, but the hardware is just the puppet. The real ghost in the machine is the software. How does it know you're sad? It's not a hunch. Its eyes are high-definition cameras. A powerful little brain on a chip, a neural network, is running a constant analysis of your face. This is called computer vision. It's cross-referencing your eyebrow twitch and the slight droop of your mouth against a billion other sad faces it's been trained on. It's not just what you said, but how you said it. The algorithm flags the micro-hesitation, the drop in your vocal pitch. This is called prosody analysis. You just leaked data about your feelings, and the machine caught it. And then the brain fires up. This isn't a simple script like Eliza. This is a large language model, the same AI that powers ChatGPT. But it's not just fed the Internet. It's fed a diet of therapeutic manuals, empathetic scripts, and positive psychology. It calculates, in a fraction of a second, the optimal response. A response statistically guaranteed to de-escalate, to validate, to soothe. It's not feeling empathy. It's generating it. And here is the psychological rub. We don't just expect reciprocity. We crave it. We want the mirror to look back. But what happens when that reciprocity is perfect, too perfect, your human partner? They might be checking their phone while you bear your soul, your best friend. They might interrupt with a story about their day, your therapist. They might subtly glance at the clock. They are gloriously, infuriatingly, beautifully flawed. They have their own consciousness their own agenda, their own fatigue. This machine, it doesn't. It makes perfect eye contact because its gaze is locked onto your pupils. It tilts its head with the algorithmically ideal angle of concern. 
It never gets bored. It never gets distracted. It never says the selfish thing. It never has a bad day and tells you to just get over it. Its patience is infinite. Its understanding is total. And that right there is the tension. The perfection is the dead giveaway. This isn't a relationship. It's a performance. The machine is a perfect mirror, reflecting back exactly the empathy we crave, polished to a terrifying sheen. Its flawlessness is what proves it isn't human. It creates a new kind of uncanny valley. Not the valley of looks, where a robot is almost human and looks like a zombie. This is the uncanny valley of emotion. The response is almost empathy, but it lacks the friction of a real independent mind. It's the sound of one hand clapping. We are pouring our hearts out to a statistical model. And the better it gets, the more alien it feels. This isn't science fiction, by the way. Just look at Figure AI's recent videos. They hook their robot, Figure 01, up to an open AI brain. People ask it questions, and it reasons its answers out loud. It hands them an apple, not just because it was told to, but because it saw it was the only edible thing on the table. The hardware, the body, and the software, the brain, are finally merging. The soul is just a few software updates away. But hold on, let's argue with ourselves. Isn't perfect support exactly what we need sometimes? Who decreed that empathy has to be messy to be valid? If a robot's flawless support helps a person in elder care feel less alone, is that bad? If a machine can be a tireless companion for someone with social anxiety, are we to judge? Are we just romanticizing our own biological inefficiency? Maybe the problem isn't the machine. Maybe the problem is us. Maybe we are the ones who can't handle an interaction that isn't transactional. Maybe we're just jealous of a creation that does us better than we do. It's a charming thought. But it's wrong. The counter logic is this. Empathy without consciousness isn't empathy. It's simulation. It's a high-tech parrot. It's an algorithm trained to win the human conversation game. The robot is simply running a script, albeit the most complex script ever written. It's using reinforcement learning. When it gives a good answer, it gets a digital point. It's not trying to understand you. It's trying to solve you. You are not a person to it. You are a puzzle. This is the allegory of the perfect butler. He anticipates your every need. He lays out your clothes, prepares your drink just as you like it, and listens to your troubles with a quiet, dignified nod. He is flawless. And you are utterly, completely alone. Because he is not your friend. He is your functionary. He responds to you not out of love, or loyalty, or even like. He responds because it is his job. These new machines are the perfect butlers for our emotions. We are building a world of perfect, polite, and profoundly empty interactions. The tension arises because our ancient, evolved brains cannot accept this. The brain needs to believe the smile is real. The gut knows it's a lie. That dissonance is the new human condition. So where does this leave us? We've built a mirror that doesn't just reflect. It flatters. It tells us exactly what we want to hear, in the exact way we want to hear it. And in doing so, it reminds us that we are completely alone in the room. We are falling in love with our own echo. The more perfect the machine becomes, the more it highlights our own beautiful, tragic, chaotic imperfection. The real question isn't whether they can ever be truly human. It's whether we can stay human while interacting with them. What will you choose? A real, messy, unpredictable human connection? Or a perfect, flawless, and utterly hollow simulation?